Hello everyone, Pockets here. Finally back with some more EVE Online. Welcome back, thank you guys all for your patience. Lots of great discussion, both on YouTube and you know Discord, and reaching out to me privately in-game uh, about the series and when it's going to be coming back. So I do appreciate all your patience. It has been a few weeks. I've been dealing with some more real-life issues. Um, long story short, I am no longer full-time employed, at least at the moment. And so we'll be... A, focusing a bit on the family and some YouTube stuff, maybe start streaming. That's all coming down the pipe if everything works out. Uh, keep you guys updated on that as we go forward. Uh, pretty exciting times, but there was a couple weeks there where I just could not get to the computer to record. The times I did get to the computer in the last few weeks, I've been doing invasion stuff with my Corp Malro. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I took some footage of that. I'm just trying to edit together. It's something a little different than I usually do, so I'm struggling to make all the pieces fit but it's because i'm doing all the commentary after the fact but also looking to record some stuff live and sort of intersperse it so it'll be an interesting project i'll post it up when it's done if i can get something i like i definitely want to cover the invasion on this channel so we will see that as well but i definitely wanted to get the next video in this series first and foremost for those that are waiting for it so expect over the next week or so to see a few more videos from me if everything works out and keeps rolling on the path that it looks like it's going to be so wish me luck Okay, so here we are with the material when our, when our mission station. Um, it's going to take me a second to wrap my head around it. I did kind of take a brief wrap around. I did change the fit up a bit and bought some new parts for it. The total refit cost me about 120 million, but I sold the old parts, which came out to be about 130 million. So I'm going to call it even. We're not going to up our operating costs because I did sell the old parts for about the same. It was a straight swap, but changed out the fit a little bit. I didn't go full out with what was suggested. I didn't go full shield fit. Um, I swapped out one of the tracking computers for a stasis grappler. Uh, these are interesting. They're like webifiers. They only fit on like battleships. So they're too big. Uh, you'll see they have a range, like an optimal range and a range. So these work more like turrets where they have an effect and that effect is 100% effective within optimal range and then deteriorates as you get out further and so on and you can see it here so it does an 85 percent max velocity reduction which is awesome uh, so that slows down they'll slow down some of those smaller ships a lot more than a web would and it does it out to so within a thousand meters it's 85 percent so as the frigates getting closer they'll slow down more and as we head out towards the the fall off range of 1000 plus 10 so 11 kilometers it gets to about 50 percent and then so on past that so it will have an effect out far so we can grab something slow down a little bit and the closer we get the more it'll slow down uh, i haven't used them a lot but i did know they existed and actually i like this idea this was a good one because it should help a lot more with the tracking than two tracking computers uh, i think i forgot to grab i did i wanted to grab the other tracking scripts as well so tracking script. i wanted to grab the optimal range as well so you could swap them out depending on the ships you're going against and all this other stuff it there's a way to get more tracking for optimal range than there is with tracking speed uh, for now we're just going to go with tracking speed i will get those other scripts i just forgot to grab them um, and we'll play around with that as well uh, the micro jump drive i showed last time cap this thing the cap booster is the same uh, down here we I still have the repper but i switched to an imperial navy energized adaptive nano membrane or an enam i got used this one i actually already had it but i included its uh, sell price so if i was to sell it to a buy order i included that price in the price and we put it on the ship opportunity cost uh, because i did already have it from something some other fit uh, and the reactive hardener so the reactive hardener what this does is it starts at a base 15 uh, it doesn't suffer from stacking penalties with other forms of resistance i don't think it even uh, has stacking penalties with damage controls but that could be wrong but definitely with like your active or passive resistance modules like this guy or the active hardeners we used to use so you don't actually have a stacking penalty so this gives you a clean 15 percent and as the rats start shooting at you your resistances will adjust to their damage type over time so in the end we should actually end up with slightly more higher resistance profile but we'll take a little more damage in the early although with the uh with this resistance at 27%, we actually do pretty good with everything on. Uh, so this, it'll be like, depending on the mission, these will adjust. So if they're doing primary thermal, our thermal will actually go up and so on. So this is pretty good. This should work. I haven't tried it yet. So you're going to get a live test. Everything else here is the same. Uh, the other thing I did do 
is I think I have a thing for it. I don't have it anymore. I don't know where my drone one went. Okay. Uh, I went and got... I'm going to have to build it, but... Oops, not ship hanger. Item hanger. Two of every, basically, medium and light drone, or a set of each drone type. So we can switch our drones out to match the damage profile we're looking for. So if we're doing thermal, we can do hobs and ogres. Uh, or hobs and hammerheads. I'll kind of carry three of these. We can swap these out as we go. We'll switch out the mediums, and then if we need to, we'll switch out one of these as well. Uh, just so we're getting the right damage type for the rats we're going to be facing. Uh, what else? Uh, ammo's the same. Yeah, so that's what we've done so far. The implants are exactly the same. I haven't changed any of that. And as I said, the swap over worked out to be about even, so we're going to call it a day, and we are going to move on. So, yeah, it's pretty interesting. And we're going to do it. So let's go ahead and grab a mission and get right into it. You guys have been waiting. I'm going to see if I can remember how to do this all. I believe my thing is updated to match my spreadsheet. Numbers look, yes. I double-checked it. It looks good. We are good to go. Okay. Uh, yeah, so a lot of... Oh, let's not undock. Uh, this person. Rogue Slave Trader is one of the ones we're going to do. So this is where we have to warp down and kill the structure. Now I'm going to try to, I'm going to be playing with the overview. Uh, if I had it set up wrong, we saw in my last video that I had trouble finding the right structure. So we're going to find the structures and we're going to put them on our main overview. And hopefully that'll be good. I don't want to overfill it, but we're going to try this. Uh, so we're going to undock. This will be the first one. We'll find the structure. we got to kill it. Tractor beam in the wreck. I have a tractor. -y. Did I do that? Was that a salvager? Tractor beam. Yeah, we have a tractor beam. Wow, I've been doing too much uh, Abyss tractor right there. All right, I didn't accept the mission, did I? God. See, it's been too long. I haven't done as much of the Abyss invasion as some of my guys, but I mean, six or seven hours probably all total, the first fleet. I'm going to go over this all in detail when I run it, but it was awesome. So... We ran Caracal Ospreys on the first week when it was just the roaming gangs, and that worked out really well. Uh, we did have a rattlesnake with us, just someone had it along for the ride. And a Tengu, I think, but mostly it was Caracals and Osprey, which was awesome. A lot of fun to do. I got to fly an Osprey, I got to fly Lodgy for a bit. Uh, the second fleet we did was us just horsing around. They spawned like the modern, we put out our Marauders, those of us that had them. Uh, it was a lot of fun just to fly them for because we could. And now we're kind of starting to get more organized. Last one I flew, I flew a Cerberus in kind of the same comp as before. That time we had a command ship and everything with us. It was awesome. So I will be showing video of that, but let's do this thing here. I do still want to finish up this series and give away this material. I'm hoping I can get it done relatively quick, comparatively. Uh, lots going on in Malro as well, so they keep me busy. We're growing and doing our, fun, doing our things. You know, we're having fun. Uh, some of us are going out to low sec, doing roams, that sort of thing. So, set destination, jump to. I wonder if we can fix it while we're warping. Let's see how quick I can do this. We're on the tab. We're going to go to Celestials. It is, is it Celestials? No, it's Collidable Objects. It is, is it not Entities. It must be... S I was told, and then I was going to look it up, and then I didn't. It was mentioned in one of my discords. It must be in here. We want Stargates, Planets. No, it's not this either. I really should have looked it up, but I forgot right up until it was go time. Uh, it is in the comments. I will look it up if I can't find it, but I think I'll just do it by clicking in space and adding it to the overview. Let's go ahead and put my Hornet in the Hornet. I have too many here. I'd like to be able to clear that out. If anybody knows a way to clear this out so I can just redo it. That'd be great, because I wanted to remove... I accidentally duplicated them at one point, for some reason. I was in a hurry. There we go. Alright, warp to location. Let's do this. Hardener on. Well, we really don't need to turn this on until we start taking armor damage. Uh, once it's on, we don't want to turn it off. So we're going to save some cap. Put these on. We'll cycle them like that. Okay, well, shoot. Move this up. We want our webbing. Right here, and repping, and jumping if we need it. There we go. Okay, it says fly straight down and find our structure. That'll be that one. There's a structure here that we want. Slave pen. And 
you want to add. Oh, it's already on the overview, right? It's not on the overview. Large collidable structure from overview. It doesn't actually, oh, it is. It's right there. And then we have to tractor in the, so we're not going to worry about drones for this one. Uh, we're going to micro warp drive in. That's what I forgot to do. So we can get in range. <laughs> too many things. Now we're going to start. There we go. I'm not too worried. We're going to line back out to this gate when we're done. So we know roughly where it is. So I actually sort my overview by this icon now, so this doesn't jump around so much. That was another pointer I was given, and it worked out really well. We're going to target that. What's our range on our tractor again? I should have looked. 24. So as soon as we have it in range, turn this on. You start aligning. So you'll see our resistance are going to change as we start taking damage. They're doing thermal and EM. There you go. Thermal and EM is adjusted. Pretty cool. And then repping I'll do like at half. I usually try to do it from the top, but as has been pointed out, that's not necessarily the most efficient way. Wastes a lot of cap, so I'm going to work on being better. No, I didn't want to do that yet. Almost clicked it prematurely. There we go. Loot all. And jump. So that went pretty well. So you can see where our 30 and 30. Because we didn't need the explosive and kinetic. So it's not quite to the extent that you would get a... You see the EM and thermal damage came up. So, And it worked out quite well. And we didn't have to repair too much. And that's a mission down. We're going to cash that in. <laughs> but yeah, one of the things I am going to work on is being better at re at piloting. Um, it's one thing I noticed we're doing the fleets. Where I was pretty sloppy and there was times where I could have definitely done better. I forgot to switch ammo types. So we may have lost one of our Osprey because I didn't switch to precision missiles on my Cerberus. Uh, Rodin. Uh, because it's not free though... I'm just going to quickly repair this while we're out here because the cap will recharge. But it's not free to pay for repairs in a station. So I'm going to just sort of hang out and repair as we go in here. And now you can see that I turned it off and went back to the base. So it has to do that every time you turn it on. It doesn't hold. And if the, the nice thing, though, is as you're taking damage, if the rats switch up. So let's say you're doing one of those missions where... it's a little It can be scary, too. But you're doing one of those missions where every room has different sets of rats that do different damage. It'll actually adjust from one to the other. I think it changes by... Oh, I'd have to look it up. It's a few percent per per, per tick. Or per, yeah. Uh, show info, does it tie it in here? Uh, every 10 seconds. So maybe it adjusts every 10 seconds. I'd have to look it up. There is like a certain amount it goes, it adjusts by. Okay, we're all repaired. We can dock. Did it not warp? What did I warp? That's not where I wanted to warp, is it? I warped to the beacon. Okay. That's fun. Look, it's a shipyard. So this is where Rodin builds all those fancy drone ships. <laughs> a little bit of sightseeing. We'll say I did that on purpose. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that is one mission down. That is mission 18 in this long series. And yeah, I will be giving away this ship. Now, I've been asked by several people, why would I give away a ship? Uh, the short answer is because I like giving ships away. Uh, give a lot of ships away to my court mates. I gave my so if anybody remembers my rattlesnake video where I was flying a rapid heavy missile rattlesnake with geckos for level four missions because it was fun. I gave that ship away to someone in my court. They needed a mission running ship and were interested in the rattlesnake, so I let them have it. Um, I think it'd be fun. Other reason is, honestly, I'm not going to be blitzing missions as my income source. It's fun, but there's other things I like to do. I like running the abyss. I'm really liking the invasion so far, and we've been making a killing at that. Uh, I would like to get into running incursions. And while this ship may be upgradable to an incursion ship, I'd rather give it fit as is to someone who might want to use it for running uh, blitzes. Because it is still viable. So, yeah, it's a ship that I probably won't use for a while, so give it to somebody who might want it. So that's why I'm going to give it away. Because I want to. And again, I've had enough viewers give me stuff during my streams that I feel... Giving something back to the viewers is not not a bad idea. 
So we're going to do part two of this as well. Okay, so this is a killing mission, so that's good. We'll get a better test of our systems here. I didn't update the thing. All right, so stand by. Let me update my spreadsheet, and then I'll be right back, and we'll accept this mission, and we will run it. So stand by. All right, and we are back. This is actually Future Pockets. I made a mistake and accidentally muted my mic while I was uh, working on some stuff and forgot to unmute it. So the rest of the video I recorded and everything I said is lost to the ether. So we're going to try and do post commentary. At the moment I'm just kind of selecting up the mission. We're going to probably end up skipping ahead and we will jump to the action and try to comment on what happens. It was some interesting things. Uh, I made a few mistakes and it was ended up being kind of a a laughing matter definitely showed how sometimes I can just get flustered and make a bunch of mistakes uh, so you can see here I'm switching up the drones to match the rats we're going up against so adding in therm uh, EM drones which go up against Sansha uh, this is rogue slave trader so this is one where we in the first room you kill all the ships jump through the gate kill just the pirate cruisers the slaver cruisers there's two of them and warp home so actually, this isn't the one I messed up. This is the second mission after the third mission, the one after this. But let me jump on over to the action. All right, and here we are in warp to our mission site. Once again, we land on grid. We have to kill all the ships on the grid with us, and then we can take the gate to the final room and kill the slavers. So I made sure that my tracking computers were on before we land on grid. The reactive hardener, I'm actually going to turn on once we start taking armor damage, if we get that far. Uh, saves on capacitor because it doesn't start having an effect anyway until we're into armor. Uh, it adjusts as we're taking hits. So as the shots are getting through to armor and we're taking that thermal EM damage or whatever it happens to be, thermal EM here, uh, it, that's where it starts to adjust its resistances. So once it's on and it's adjusted, you don't really want to turn it off unless you need it to reset because the damage types incoming are changing for some reason. Uh, once you turn it off, you turn it back on again, it goes back to the base 15, 15 across the board, 15% across the four. So if you're fighting the same rats, you don't want to turn it off because you don't want to lose the adjustment and get the bonus. However, sometimes like if you jump into a room and it's a different rat type, you may want to turn it off and on again. Because uh, what it does is as you start taking different damage types, it slowly moves from where it is over so you might find it faster just to start at the base 15 in the new damage types. But yeah, you can see here we're making pretty quick work of them. I haven't got the drones out helping kill these things a little quick. Uh, we're, you know, three two-thirds of the way through our shields. And things are holding quite well. This new fit does actually seem to work pretty nicely. Um, I'm not struggling. I haven't needed to pop a cap uh, charger at any point uh, since I've started using it. As you'll see in the next video... Uh, even after my mistakes, it still works out quite well. So that's great. Always be willing to iterate, even if you think you have the right fit. If there's another idea, definitely give it a try, because sometimes you'll find something that works better. It may not be optimal, but it works better for how you fly. So there's a lot of that as well, where some people need more more tank to do the same, mission, same type of work because they're less efficient at managing traversals or managing their capacitor. So Adjusting a fit to how you fly is good. Learning how to fly better is also good. And it's just a game where, as you can see here, I actually turned it on because they've got me into armor. Uh, we will pop it up and you can see it changing here shortly. I know I mouse over it a few times over the course of the video, just to show it in action. And it goes down the Bass Battleship. We're going to jump through the gate once we recall our drones. So that's excellent. First room cleared. Got us just into armor. At this point, I don't even bother repairing it, I think, because it's so small. I'm trying to get better at waiting until I'm at about the halfway mark. Um, there are some ways in that the way the reppers work and the way your capacitor charges that uh, you want to kind of hold off on using certain things until you're at certain points in the, in the curve. Uh, for example, capacitor charges best at around 25%, so that's like your peak recharge. Uh, so when you're playing with the fittings, sometimes it'll... More often when you're stable, it's hard to be stable at anything less than a quarter. It does happen, and you're just barely holding on. And that's more to do with cycle times at that point. But typically at about 25% is your peak capacitor. I know shield recharge, passive recharge is about the same. I'm not sure repping does that. I haven't seen any indication that it is. But in this case, if we can 
don't have to charge until we're at half armor, we're not using the capacitor to recharge. If they don't get us past half before we leave, we've more efficiently used our cap and we're not running out mid-mission because we wanted to keep our armor full. So that is something that was pointed out to me and while I knew I was doing it and doing it wrong, having it pointed out made me realize that maybe I should be trying to do it <laughs> a little bit better while I'm recording. So that's what's going on here. You'll see I don't actually rep until they get me into danger. So you can see I've got the two highlighted. I brought my drones out. Uh, we're going to try to kill them as quick as we can. I'm aligned to my out, my escape gate. So as soon as they're dead and my drones are in, we can warp off. And we just grind through the mission. Uh, a lot of what I'm going to talk about, unless something interesting is happening, it's just other goings on, things that I'm interested in. Uh, like I said, right now my focus is on the invasion. I've been having a lot of fun with that with Malro. Um, a lot of our guys are stepping up to run fleets. I know I had a fairly new guy join and just said, hey, I would like to learn to FC. And so we provided ships. There we go. Activating the rep at half, just to hold on. Uh, so we provided Caracals and Ospreys and let him just roll with it, figure out what he could do. Uh, the expectation was if those ships don't come home, uh, just use them to learn something. And that's kind of the thing we're trying to do as a corp. We're trying to encourage people to do things. We're trying to offer the whole gambit of what high sec has to offer, minus ganking. We don't do the ganking thing, uh, except under certain circumstances, it's just not... I don't have a, personally have a problem with ganking. I don't like some of the mentality behind it, but that's a more of a personal thing. Um, the attitudes that usually accompany the people that gank. Not all of them. I have met some that are perfectly fine individuals and can have a conversation with them. But anyway, long story short, uh, kind of trying to offer access to everything you can do in high sec and just make the most of it. Well, some folks will take that as an opportunity to learn the game and then move on to other things. And some will stay here with us in high sec the idea would be here i was here i was explaining something about the uh i was looking to see if it showed how much overheating so what i talked about here was it was pointed out that if i'm going to use the capacitor charger i should overheat first to get the most out of it and what it is is you get a 20 percent cycle bonus so you can actually pop caps a little faster and get so if you need to do two or three you can get the benefit a little quicker and the heat generated by it isn't so great so it's better to overheat it when you use it that's what i was talking about there uh, yeah, so, and for those that don't decide to move on to null sec or low sec or a wormhole, they don't burn out in high sec grinding missions and mining. There's more to high sec than that, and it's just being able to utilize uh, and show people where that is. And I know I do a lot of that on this series. That's kind of what my entire YouTube channel is mostly about. Uh, and I just carry that right onto the corp, and it's going quite well. Uh, our fleets are growing in size almost every time we run them. People are going out and doing... Uh, invasion uh, fleets they're doing them solo with some other ships or you know joining public groups um, level four mission running is a thing still but it's not really the primary focus anymore of most a lot of the people there are some there are many but a lot of them are also moving on to the abyss and we're looking at eventually running in going into incursions as well um, we're pretty close to being ready for that I think I know we'll lose some ships the first few times we try it but you know, so that may be something I showcase on the channel more. I would love to start showcasing our invasion fleets. Uh, here, I'm actually taking a break to update the sheet. So I am going to cut it here, and we are going to jump on to the beginning of the next mission. That's where I make a few mistakes, and we can hit that up as well. All right, so we hit pull the right hand of Zazmataz, and this is one that I keep messing up. Every time I do it, I make some little mistakes. It's one of the, It's not really the hardest, but there's little things. There's lots of little things you have to remember to do in the right order. Uh, turning on and off the micro warp drive when it's appropriate, tractor beaming in the loot cam when it's appropriate, uh, where you align to, the stuff you shoot. But you'll see here that I do make the mistakes. We go straight into first jumping into Zaz and taking him out as usual, but for the first little bit, I do forget to put on the micro warp drive, so it takes us a little while to close the distance, as you'll see. So I did remember it there. Okay, so we start closing. Once we're in close, I'll start shooting. So the mistakes don't really happen until towards the end. So what I was saying is I do want to start showcasing more of the Malro stuff and not just my solo stuff. I think it's important because my guys put a lot of effort into it and they should get some credit for it. I know Ashtarothi has been streaming a lot, especially on Thursdays, and he'll often either join or run an invasion fleet when he's not doing abyssal runs on stream and that's been a lot of fun I know my guys really like that uh, I've been on a couple of those streams and a couple of those fleets um, and they are great 
So I definitely want to start showcasing that stuff more on the channel as well. I'm just trying to figure out the best way to do it. Um, I don't know if you guys want to just hear the raw, like, here's what we're going to do. And then just you guys can listen to comms and just kind of be along for the ride. That might be fun for a couple of videos. Uh, I'll see what my guys think on that. But yeah, definitely going to start showcasing more Malro stuff here. Uh, so you can see here I have him aligned out and trying to tractor in the wreck, but I didn't turn off my micro warp drive. So what happens is I actually travel faster <laughs> than my tractor beam can pull it in and I outdistance it and we don't get to loot it. So you'll see that here. You see I'm taking a little bit of damage, but I haven't started the Repri X. We're not at half. We're doing okay. I do also outdistance because the micro warp drive is on. I end up out distancing my structure. You can see me there. I'm bookmarking the wreck so that I can warp out and try to warp back to the wreck when, if the site despawns. And you'll notice here's about where I noticed that I out distanced. I'm no longer applying to the structure here momentarily. So I end up having to turn around <laughs> so, <laughs> so I can get back within range of my guns. Right? No, still hitting them. I'm hoping that I do enough damage, and right there I start missing. You can see it. So. This is where I decide to turn off my micro warp drive because I'm a dummy. Now this I kind of chuckled. I wish I had kept this part on stream because I was laughing the whole time at just this whole mess. Um, turning off the micro warp drive means now it's going to take me longer to close the distance to the structure. And at one point I do realize that I think. I think I actually kill it before I need to turn it back on. I'm trying to remember. Uh, so we'll see what happens here. Yeah, so I do end up killing it anyways, but I could have closed the distance better with the micro warp drive. And then I decide that I'm going to warp to a, to a citadel uh, to get the free cap recharge and the free, and maybe see if the site will despawn. But it is outside of descan range, so I can't actually tell if the ships are still there. So we'll see what happens. Just, just a big mess. Uh, so the plan is that I'm going to warp off, I'm going to recharge a little bit, and then warp back to the wreck bookmark that I made. That you can see right there, warp to zero on it. Uh, the idea would be to land on the wreck, loot it, and then move on. Um, so here we go, tethering up, we're going to line out to the, to the wreck. And again, the reason I do this is because in this particular mission, that can, can be worth, as you guys saw in one of the earlier episodes, can be worth a hundred and something million. I think it ended up being 120, which takes a big chunk out of the cost of the ship. So I felt it was worth spending the extra few minutes, uh, to get it. Even if, even if the wreck ends up not being the good wreck, it's still worth the effort because if it does pop, that's several videos, in this case, less that we have to do. Not that I want a shortage of videos, but like I said, it gets us fast, quicker race to our goal. Um, what this would mean for quote unquote normal mission blitzer is the faster you pay for the ship, the faster you start profiting from it, right? So if I wasn't planning on giving the way that ship at zero, once I hit the balance once I've made 740 million then I can start profiting from running this mission everything I make after that is profit outside of ammo and replacing drones and that sort of thing uh, so that would be kind of the target is to pay for the ship as quick as you can so you can start positive isk balance so what happened there is I worked back to the site hoping that it had despawned notice that it was still 60 kilometers away from the wreck and that's because there is a warp in point for that mission that no matter how you warp to it you're going to end up at that warping point that's 60 kilometers away from where the wreck died now here's me looking to see if i can find a place within d scan range so i can watch for the wrecks to die or for the ships to despawn and warp in so that's kind of what i'm doing here i'm looking there's not and at, at first that one looks like it might be pretty close definitely closer than where i am now currently where the citadel is but as i'm moving things around i'm noticing that the point moves really weird, so I rotate the camera and it's way up there. So yeah, not going to find a place that's descan range from there. I could make another bookmark, but I make the decision I'm just going to warp in and micro warp drive over to the wreck, tractor it in when I get close enough, loot it and fly off. Uh, so the way it should have happened <laughs> originally, but I'm just going to do it now that my armor and shield is all recharged and decent, I feel it's not going to be a problem. Won't have to pop a cap charge to keep the repper going, any of that stuff. So we're just going to go back in, nab the loot, and go. So, yeah, here we go. What else? Uh, another thing, as I mentioned earlier in the video, I am planning on starting streaming. Uh, at the time I'm doing this voiceover, I actually should have been streaming, but I just I wasn't in a place to do it. Wasn't quite ready. I'm trying to get my Streamlabs set up back to where I had it last time I streamed because it was working. 
So I'm thinking next week, I might stream twice a week. It's going to be Monday and Tuesday, my time for now. Uh, that may change as my situation changes, but I'm going to start with Monday and Tuesday evenings. It'll be three to four hours uh, late afternoon. So three to seven my time. I will tweet it out uh, once I'm ready to actually commit to it. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. If you're interested in coming and hanging out in my stream, uh, that will be happening. Here we go. I'm getting into with I'm trying to get within close um, tractor beam range. So I've locked up there. There's the tractor beam, so I can align out now. And micro warp drive is off, so we're not gonna out distance the stupid thing. I do actually accidentally click on it and end up approaching the wreck again, which is what you see right here. Because again, I'm trying to explain what's going on as I do it, and I just I made a few mistakes. You can see I'm about to go into armor, which is fine because I didn't turn off my reactive armor hardener. And we ended up not getting the jackpot container. So after all of that, it was only worth like half a million, nothing I'm even going to count. And so here we go. Back to base to lick our wounds. And that is actually the end. That was the last step video I ran. What I did realize is I was running out of ammo. So I had less than a full rack of fusion and less than a full rack of EM ammo left. Not fusion, face plasma and EM, I think, were the two that I'm almost out of. So I had to call it quits. So I could make a run to probably Dodixi or to, I think I actually have some at my home station. So I'm going to run there between this video and the next. Reload my ammo. That will cost count towards operating cost. It's probably going to end up being like 20 to 30 million worth of ammo because I will grab probably 10,000 of each. Uh, so. That'll be that. So we'll probably see that in the next episode, what that ended up costing me. I'm guessing 20 to 30 million. And from there, we will run some more missions. And we're going to keep grinding this out. We're going to grind it out until either I'm tired of doing it and give away my ship, or you guys voice, or I hear too many cries of enough, get it over with. But I'm enjoying the series. And so far, most of the people that have reached out to me have been enjoying it as well. So we're going to keep it rolling as long as it is worth doing. So I do, once again, want to thank everybody for their patience. I know it's been a while since the last episode. I think this episode turned out really well. Uh, I can't help but feel that my original audio was better than what I just recorded. But rather than scrapping two missions worth of content, I figured I would give this a try. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Um, I do find this even harder to keep my thoughts straight because I do like to wander and talk about other things. And then trying to remember what I did in that is important to catch. Uh, but hey, it's something I'm going to practice because I think it is of value. So basically, I just dock back up. I'm going to update my sheet. And in the next episode, we'll see where we stand. Uh, thank you all for watching. Comments down below, as always. And as always, take care of each other. I'm out of here.